Hi everyone, it's Tom, WA2IVD. Welcome to the 11th installment in our ICOM IC7300 from A to Z series. Today we're going to take a look at the IF filter settings and we're also going to look at the notch filter. In the last installment we were looking at the passband tuning and how to fine tune the filter settings. Today we're going to look at all of the basic filter settings for programming the presets and adjusting them to your liking. Let's get to it. If you're new to HF radio or new to ham radio, it might be a little bit difficult for you to appreciate just how remarkable the filters and the filter settings on the IC7300 are. Back in the old days of ham radio, and by old days I mean just 10 or 20 years ago, radios did not come with completely programmable IF filters. Usually if you had a higher end radio you could buy optional filters for it, uh, which were sometimes quite expensive and you usually had a choice of maybe two or three and you had to plug those in inside the radio, open it up, and they were crystal filters that had uh, maybe a 500 hertz bandwidth for CW, um, and maybe you could get a narrower 1.8 or 2 kilohertz bandwidth one for sideband, and that was it. There was no adjustment. You could turn the filter on or turn it off. Uh, and some lower-end radios did not have any additional filtering at all. The bandwidth that you received on sideband or CW or AM was based on the radio's design, and it was what it was. You could not adjust it at all. So fast forward to today, and with the uh, ICOM being a completely software-defined radio, those filters can be adjusted to very, very specific characteristics, and perhaps as software updates come out from ICOM in the future, they may even have additional features that uh, we can only guess at right now. So let's take a look at the filters on here. You hear some CW in the background, and I'm, uh, I'm going to do this on CW tonight because it'll really give you an appreciation for what the filters can do. Um, if you take a look at the manual page, um, you will see a table here that shows the default filter bandwidths, and they're different for each mode. So for sideband and sideband data, they're slightly different. CW is narrower. Um, RIDI also has narrow ones. And then the AM and FM filters are both much wider, and that's because those modes are much wider in bandwidth. So I'm set to lower sideband right now, but we're listening to the CW portion of the band. And um, part of the reason I'm doing CW is because I can at least find a few signals close to each other here. So let's go to CW mode, and we'll look at what the filter settings are there. Now, if you, uh, if you watched um, the passband tuning episode... You know that by, um, I can go through the filters, sorry, I can go through the filters here by just touching them, and by pressing and holding the filter, it brings up the menu that shows the filter settings and it leaves it on the screen. So we're going to use that for tonight. Filter 1 in CW is a default bandwidth of 1.2 kilohertz. And with that, if I can find a couple other signals here, uh, at least maybe a few that are kind of close. Here's a few. Uh, at least I thought there was another one there. Maybe here. Well, once again, the bands are failing me here, I'm trying to find a few signals that might be close together. I can hear this guy, and if I tuned down lower and lower you can hear him all through the range here if I go to the next narrower one which is only 500 Hertz you notice you were hearing him a moment ago you don't hear him at all now I can tune him a little closer and hopefully hear him and we'll go back up to this guy <laughs> 
So everybody is out to get me here in terms of uh, helping me find signals. So there's one there. Now I can uh, hear these at least over a little bit of range. If I go to the next lowest one, which is only 100 hertz, then you hear literally nothing until I get right on... There's somebody tuning up. And if we can find somebody sending code right next to him, there. We can hear the guy sending code, and you couldn't hear the carrier that was tuning up right next to it at all. So that is the remarkable thing that these uh, filters can do. And actually, let's go back to this guy that's tuning up again here. There. There's somebody tuning up. I'll go to the wider filter. Now you can hear the, the one tuning up. And you... And now I can barely hear the guy sending code. And if I go to the narrow filter, all I can hear is the person sending code and somebody tuning up literally right next to him. You can't hear at all. So that's the remarkable thing about these filters. Now let's take a look at what we can do with the settings. So the bandwidth on here, again... 1.2, 500, 100, and you can customize each one of these filters and it will remember it for you by band and by mode. So you have several settings. One is the bandwidth. You see the BW button here. And if I press the BW now, it highlights the bandwidth and it shows me the bandwidth here. And again, this is another one that uses the tuning knob and not the multi knob. I can turn the bandwidth all the way up to 3.6 kilohertz. And you notice it's a little skewed here because 700 hertz is the default CW center frequency for the side tone. Now I can go down all the way down to 50 hertz, which is incredibly narrow. As we adjust the bandwidth in uh, CW mode, uh, actually, the way this works is the bottom end of the filter is fixed at 400 hertz. The filter center frequency is set to 700 hertz. Center is a little bit of a misnomer here because it's moving the upper end away from it. But it just moves the upper end up and down in CW mode until you get to 500 hertz. And it also, if you notice, is going in 100 hertz steps. Once you get to 500 hertz, then it starts to increment it, the bottom and the top together, and they go in 50 hertz steps bandwidth, so it moves each the, the bottom and the top down and up by 25 hertz at a time as you get narrower. And the reason that it doesn't expand the bottom down is to listen to CW tones. If you get a tone much lower than 400 hertz, it's pretty hard to hear. So they kind of have this dialed in for CW operation. So you can see that it slightly changes here. Now, we talked about the sharp and the soft, or at least I pointed them out. The soft skirts, uh, and I changed filters here. Soft, and you can tell by the picture here, means that the edges of the filter are a little bit more rounded off, like they would be with an analog filter. Sharp means that the edges are very sharp skirts, and you'll get a different uh, tone quality from that. Not by much, but as you get a little bit um, away from things, and it, this is mostly a personal preference. The one thing is if you get very narrow um, filter frequencies, you can, uh, and you have it set to sharp skirts, you can get a little bit of a kind of a ringing that, that can be a little bit annoying to people. You sort of hear the tone all the time. Um, you hear that a little bit on any narrow uh, filter setting, but you hear it more. So this is really a personal preference between soft and sharp. 
That's really all there is to setting the frequencies. You can set each one individually and adjust them. And I think I mentioned earlier that it remembers them by mode and band. That was incorrect, actually. It remembers them by mode. So the CW filters, there's a set of three for that. There's a set of three for sideband and so on. But once you program these, they will be the same across all the bands. And then the one other button here is the default button, which if I press and hold that, it sets it back to the default setting. So I can go ahead and set all of these back to the default setting. And then this will match what is in the manual. And then we're going to change to sideband. And again, the only difference here on sideband is, uh, whoops, the, uh, if I change the frequency here, you can see that it narrows uh, both ends together all the way across the entire spectrum. You can still set this as low as 50 hertz, even for sideband. That really won't do you much good. Um, but uh, you can set them to your preferences, and then we'll go back to the default here. So that's it for setting the filters, and you can see how remarkably well they work on sideband, and they can be very effective. I'm sorry, you can see how remarkably well they work on CW, and they can be very effective on sideband as well. Now let's take a quick look at the notch filter. Okay, and there it goes. So the notch filter function does a remarkable job. Let's see if you basically can make somebody completely disappear if they're tuning up on top of somebody that you're trying to listen to. And that's right here with this push button. If you press it once, and we'll see if he comes back here, you get auto notch, which it'll find uh, any tuning that's going on. And then just make it disappear. So the auto notch comes up when you press the button the first time and it says AN. If we press it the second time we get manual notch and if we press and hold it we get the menu which allows us to adjust exactly where the frequency is. We'll see if we can find a carrier to do that and you can also adjust the width to be wide, uh, mid, or narrow. So again, press and hold the notch button to bring up the notch menu. Press it once to go to auto notch. Press it again to go to manual notch. Press it a third time to turn it off. Let's see if we can find something. So there's the auto notch feature. And if I go to manual, hopefully I can get there. Right there. So you can manually find the signal that you're trying to notch out. And I'll be honest with you, I'm not sure why I would ever do that. Um, because the auto notch is so effective if you've got a single carrier. I suppose if you were trying to listen to one carrier and notch out another one, that would be the one time you might want to use the auto notch, but otherwise I would always just use auto because it's going to find it. And you notice even if I tune it, as soon as I stop tuning, it'll refind it and notch it right out. So that's about it for the notch filter. Well, I hope a few of you found a few useful bits in here that you could use. Once again, thanks for watching. I'm Tom, WA2IVD, and this is Ham Cured Smoke.